G'day mate, 40 here, listening to a podcast on Richard Spencer's Substack, redxjournal.substack, The AI Illusion, recorded December 8, 2022. This is Mark Brahman speaking. I understand your point. I mean, it's, oh. yeah, I mean, again, I think, it, uh, I think Christianity and Judaism, in a very, they are mis- mystery religions, but implicit. Mystery religions has a meaning. It means that you have to be an initiate, initiate to gain access to the mysteries of the religion. So Judaism is like the opposite of a mystery religion. It says the Torah is not far from you. It's very close to you, and yes, you can do it. So mystery religion refers to Hellenic and Greek religions. Uh, and uh, Christianity has taken on some aspects of mystery religion. Right, you get taken into the mystery of salvation when you believe in Jesus. Uh, Judaism's not a mystery religion, right? They're positing a kind of breeding ideal. So, in other words, Yahweh is effectively, you know, when you read the Hebrew Bible, uh, Yahweh is a very, you know, he's he's certainly not Aryan. He's he's a very kind of Jewish character. He has a very kind of Jewish personality and character. Um, and so, that has a kind of uh, race or or eth- ethnic forming. Um, consequence, right? Yeah, but uh, more than more than the Jewish conception of God, you know, formed the Jews. All right, the Jews formed their, their religion from the the culture and the talents of the Jewish people. Right, it wasn't wasn't a particular conception of God that uh, formed the Jewish people. When you worship a God. When you worship a god like Yahweh, you sort of conform a race to that type. Uh, so, in other words, it... no, you don't form a race to that type. Right? That type resonates with certain conceptions of the world. Right? Judaism is not primarily a faith; it's primarily a tribal identity. This might also be getting uh, uh, be sort of what Richard's getting at is that you know it's not it's what we're talking about also is that the religion produces the type as opposed to the race, uh, as, as opposed to the religion being a kind of, um, what's the word? Uh, uh, Excretion a, of the race. Like, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I would say the, the opposite is much more true. Like a particular people will develop, you know, a particular understanding of reality. So let's, let's posit the religious faith statement that God came down and gave the Torah to the Jews. But what the Jews then do with the Torah and how they implement it, how they study it, how they practice it, right? how they make it real and concrete in their lives can have a whole lot to do with the proclivities and talents and gifts of this particular people rather than theological conceptions you know, shaping this uh, particular race. Uh, yeah, the, the idea that uh, the, the, the old like sort of DR trope that like culture comes from race, right? We're, we're, say, we're actually saying the, uh, the reverse. That, uh, really- yeah, I would say the old DR trope then is much more accurate. Culture forms race. Yes. Now, it may, it may, uh, you, there, you could argue that there's a kind of chicken and egg relationship there, right? Because part of what we're trying to form, um, we're trying to uh, recapture on some, in some, on some level, we're trying to reca- recapture uh, an ancestor or a founder type, but we're, but we're trying to even improve on that, right? Because we uh-huh. want a type that is. Uh, that is able to sustain civilization, sustain itself, and even improve itself, right? Um, you know? Yes. Not something that uh, JF would like, I don't think, because it seems like he's, he's anti uh JF got to repeat. Yeah, he does seem to be in very some curious way. Um, but we're going to have to compete with the AI. We're going <laughs> to have to coexist and compete with the AI. <laughs> I need right. to actually read his book. Yeah, I the revolutionary also, I phenotype. Am a huge skeptic of the power of AI. I, I think this is. I don't think just, we should underestimate it, but I don't think that we should, uh, um, you know, start preparing uh, for the end of mankind or anything. You know, right? I, I have a, I have a, an interesting thought I've been throwing around in my own head. I'll put it to you, gents, is um, about the AI. Just the fact that, I mean, when these sort of, um, I don't know what to call them, conspiracy theories, like doomsday prophecies, dystopian visions of quote-unquote artificial intelligence, it's a very, that concept itself is a very liberal, um, 
like it, it is a product of liberalism in that it produces because liberalism in its scientific materialism cannot understand consciousness and i say this as a materialist it, it's a it is something that i do and think about it reduces consciousness it describes agency as sort of being able to come from a me- mechanistic causal system and, and all of that is to say if human beings are programming the terminator by it cannot go beyond unless there is some type of moment of transcendence then it in itself cannot have agency like it can have error which might like a nuclear bomb might you know yeah it sounds like a traditional theist argument how can something without consciousness create consciousness you know instead of bombing under the hearts of russia it might end up on a kindergarten document but that in itself is not agency of the um, system that human beings have birthed. So I think that at the heart of it is a misnomer and a very sort of scientism, quote unquote, as much as I hate that word, understanding of consciousness and, and agency. Well, let, let, me, let me put it to you this way, because this, this is a new topic and, and it's big and, it, and it's something that it is, I, I agree with quite a bit of what you're saying, if not all of it. And um, let, let me try to kind of reformulate it in some way. So we have actually used language for a shorter amount of time than we would imagine. And, you know, dogs can understand words. I'm not sure a dog quite has a grammar, um, but they understand the sound wave as indicating something. They, a dog knows its name. Um, a dog knows, if he hears the word walk or dinner, and it's, it's a, you know, it's, he perks up. And is going to look at you and be like, oh, walk, yeah, that sounds great, yeah, let's do it. You know, <laughs> so he, he understands language to some extent, but there's no, there's no actual grammar or logic exactly. Now, you know, we're Homo sapiens, so you know, wise man, let's say, and we we kind of have this notion about ourselves that we are the, the rational animal or something like that. That is actually extremely incorrect. Uh, fish. Uh, I actually just saw something about this today. There was an experiment in Germany in which fish. Um, have a sense of numbers. They have a sense of a larger and a smaller number. And they can actually engage in a sort of addition to some extent. So, and they don't have a frontal brain anywhere close to the extent that we have one. So, like, you know, there's so much, we, we, we might even overestimate, like, the head as the seat of reason or something. We have reason in our spinal cord. Um, and I, I've used this metaphor uh, uh, quite a bit, and so I, I, I apologize if people are getting bored of it, but like there is no t- literally no time to think if you are standing at a baseball plate and someone is throwing 70 80 90 100 miles per hour you cannot think in that split second when you determine what pitch is it a curve is it a fastball is it a change up is it in- yeah i think this is really good analysis from richard inside is it outside is this the, is this the pitch i want to hit you have absolutely no time to think that and yet you do the idea that some of these baseball players could explain to you like how a curveball curves, they can't, but they just do it and they know it in their bones, maybe kind of literally in their bones. A outfielder, it, it, he hears a crack off the bat. The, the, the audible level of the crack gives him information. He sees it, he sees the ball, maybe even in kind of peripherally to some degree, and he sees it travel like 50 feet and he estimates exactly where he should run to. And he hops to the exact spot, opens up his glove, and in a lackadaisical manner catches it. There is reason, mathematics, rationality in our spinal cord. And we kind of don't grasp this. And you're thinking consciousness when you're using language. It is Right, so what's going on with your body is going to have a profound effect with your cognition, your, your mood, your hormone levels. Yeah, how much at ease you are in your body if you're in pain, if your muscles are tight, if you're at ease, if you're free, all right? What, what's going on with your you know, muscle tension level is going to profoundly affect your thinking, right? You're not going to be free in your thinking and your emotions if your body is tight and compressed, right? You're not going to feel anxious if your body is free. You're not going to feel depressed if you've got upward direction flowing through your body. Right? When you feel depressed, your body is gonna sag and be depressed, concave, collapsing in and down on itself. 
So some pretty good analysis here from Richard. It's kind of almost like a late stage of this. And there also have been experiments, I think I've mentioned these to other people, of, and I'll mention two, um, one of which is that your muscles will engage before you think to pick up your coffee. Now, what I, now, does that mean that we're all predetermined? Or, no, it does not mean that at all. What it means of, and what it means is that you are telling yourself in your mind using language, I want coffee, as a kind of post facto rationalization of what you are instinctively doing. Uh, another thing, so there's a... Yeah, your body and your reflexes and your instincts they often kick in way before your cognition. Uh, your body instincts, reactions, uh, want something, desire something, move towards something, and then you use your reason to justify what you want. There's an experiment that's done where they tell people to pick up, they're blinded, and they tell people to pick up objects, and they say, we want you to judge the texture of these objects. And so you'll, you'll pick one up that will be like furry, and you'll pick up another one that will be slick. And then they'll say which object was heavier, and people will get it. What that indicates, that might sound like dumb or obvious. No, it's not dumb or obvious. What that means is that not only are they engaged, they can engage in reason, they're engaging in judgment unconsciously. Do you understand what I just said, or do I need to repeat that? Yeah, we have certain basic instincts. We have evolutionarily evolved reactions to life that uh, predispose us to certain psychological reactions, certain verbal reactions, certain political reactions, right? And these are evolutionarily adaptive. The reason we have these instincts and reactions is that they have served our ancestors for hundreds of thousands of years. And so some people are predisposed towards you know, a left-wing perspective on life, others towards a right-wing. There's some people predisposed towards you know, traditional conceptions. You know, others are more open to you know, innovative ways of organizing families, communities, civilizations. Right? The, the left-wing approach is to be more open to new ways of organizing people and families. The, the right-wing approach is to stick with you know, time-tested traditional ways of organizing people.